For this week's Case of the Week, uh, I've had a couple of requests to pull out one of my greatest hits. Uh, I don't know if it's actually a, a greatest hit, but uh, a lot of pe people that have been asking about um, you know, what you can put on top of a tetracycline case or an endodontically treated dark stump shade. Uh, apparently, dentists have struggled a little bit with some materials that are a little too translucent over these dark shades. So I wanted to share a case with you. It's been a long time since I shared this with you. It's one of the first tetracycline cases we ever treated with Bruxer. Uh, but it was it kind of for us to see just in fact how much Bruxer could block out. So we found a patient in the laboratory, actually a technician, who had some uh, tetracycline standing. You can see it's pretty good. He's got an edge-to-edge -edge bite too. So that kind of calls for Bruxer if we're, you know, we're going to try to change that and get him away from that end-to-end. -end. But you can actually see the cross bite there on tooth number six uh, and seven. And so we know he's, you know, a little bit rough on his teeth, but you can see the dark shade he has. I'm not sure why we took a shade there. We could pick any shade <laughs> that we want. I'm not sure what we thought we were going to try to match by putting that in there. I took the easy shade advanced and put it in too. I just wanted to shoot that shade and see if smoke poured out of the back of it or if it uh, just said C4 plus or something like that. So we anesthetize him. Since we're prepping both these teeth, instead of breaking the contacts as the first step of the reverse preparation technique, I'm actually going to use the 856025 and I'm going to break the contact and at the same time start the marginal development. And this really isn't a reverse prep video, so we're going to go all Brady Bunch on you and split it into screens and, and show you just breaking all those contacts at the same time. Oh, here's one of life's simple pleasures. Walks by the lake, uh, frozen yogurt on a summer's day, and cutting off a PFM. Oh, what, how wonderful that is compared to cutting off uh, some of our new high-strength all-ceramic crowns where it takes six burrs in the better part of an hour. So that PFM falls right off. And now we're going to start prepping the gingival margin. This is the 801021 burr being used uh, on all the teeth, really, that we're preparing. And uh, just tracing it around at the gingival margin. Um, I'm going to try a, usually we'd pack a cord uh, at this point, but uh, I'm not sure we're going to impress this case today. We do end up impressing it, so I decided to try it with a different way. Instead of a two-cord technique, I'm going to end up, when we impress it, putting a double zero cord in, dropping the margin if I have to, and then using a cordless approach, the new retraction capsule from 3M SB, on top of that. So I'm placing my uh, the incisal as depth cuts, doing a little slower than I usually would because I'm watching for the color change in the two structure just to kind of see it happen. I'm kind of fascinated by it. And now the axial depth cut being placed at the junction of the incisal third in the middle third with the incisal edge depth cut. And we've got our margins already prepped, uh, as you can see, highlighted in red in fuchsia. And then in green, the incisal edge depth cuts. And in blue, living color, South Park colors, we've got uh, the axial depth cut. And now we take that 856025 burr and we just start kind of flying through these teeth and reduce until we can't see these depth cuts. Look at that. There's a great look right there at how the enamel still translucent and the dentin is where all the tetracycline staining takes place. It's not in the enamel itself. So when we used to try these cases with veneers, the more we prepped into the enamel to try to give us a thicker veneer, the more the color of the dentin showed through. So it was kind of a vicious cycle of, of prepping into the tooth going, uh-oh, it's getting darker. I need to have my veneer a little thicker. Uh-oh, it's getting really dark now. And uh, we've had patients where we tried that before and it really didn't work. Uh, and so crowns have been the way to go, especially in this case, Bruxer crowns to block it out. I can't quite get that BioTemp bridge to fit passively, so I'm putting in the prep stent that the BioTemp technici technicians used, and I'm trying to find where I haven't reduced enough, and it's usually in the gingival third, and it's usually interproximal somewhere, uh, or it could be on the lingual. But basically with the BioTemps, they've made them so they all draw together like it's going to be a big bridge, but in reality, these restorations are going to be single units. So. I don't really need that kind of draw, but I do need it to passively fit. It does passively fit. I'm relining, relining it with Bisacryl here. You can't really pump it up and down like you would in the old days with methyl methacrylate, but we want to make sure we don't lock it on. So sometimes as it starts to set, I will wiggle it and then put it back in again. Here's the G5 desensitizer uh, being used. Relic Christensen has shown that two one-minute applications of this kills 99.9% .9 of the bacteria. We used to just do it at the crown scene appointment, and one day I asked Rella, why aren't we doing this at the end of the prep appointment before we put on the, um, uh, the temporaries, because we know they're going to leak like a sieve, and the, and the margins are all like, great. She goes, no, absolutely, you, you could definitely do that. And so I thought, wow, that's 
something we should probably be doing and kind of protecting the teeth before we put them in the temporary. So now anytime we're getting ready to dismiss the patient, whether we're putting on a temporary crown or a permanent crown, we're going to put on those two one minute coats of Gluma, you know, or any of the Gluma like materials. In this case, it was the G4 from Clinician's Choice or it could have been Micro Prime from Danville Engineering. There's all kinds of those that are exactly the same. We lost a little build up here, so I'm just using some composite to build this back up again, some light cure composite to get an ideal prep. When you work on dental uh, technicians such as this gentleman, um, they will always look at their models afterwards and want to know why a prep doesn't look perfect. And so you end up making sure that you're able to um, go in and build up anything that needs to be built up. It's in the best long-term interest of the tooth and the restorations as well. So we're going to put that double zero cord from UltraPak around all those teeth and then the retraction capsule from 3MSB around all those teeth with some anatomic copper caps, have the patient bite down on it for eight to 10 minutes and then go through our steps of rinsing off all that, putting the light body uh, onto the preparations while my assistant loads the tray. Look at that. I'm true to my word with a perforated custom tray for a big case like this so we get a nice full arch impression. And again, not the same kind of retraction that we get with two cords, but enough material underneath it so that it looks uh, really nice. So about a week later, we have the patient back, take the temporaries off. There's the Cabo Sonic Scaler. No better way to clean up a tooth after temporization. I mean, every little bit of temporary cement comes off so you don't have fit issues. We're going to try in the uh, Bruxer crowns. Patient liked uh, what they saw. And so once they, we've tried them in, we know they've been contaminated with saliva. And uh, as a result, I can rinse them out with air and water like I'm doing here and they may look fine to me, but I know that the salivary phosphate groups are still bound to the zirconia oxide on the inside of the crown, so I could either sandblast them, or what I'm doing in this case, because I'm too lazy to walk down the hall to sandblast them, is use some IvoClean from IvoClar, and this uh, 12 to 15% zirconia oxide solution, and I'm just getting it, spreading it around the inside of all those crowns, and this is gonna remove all those salivary phosphates from the inside of the crown, and allow us to put these crowns in without worrying about it. So if in fact we're gonna put these in with a resin cement, we would play Z Prime Plus and then a resin cement, but we're not, we're using Ceramer uh, from Doxa and this is a calcium aluminate glass ionomer cement. Then we're gonna triturate it here. This is a very hydrophilic cement, just like the zirconia oxide, the Bruxer material is very hydrophilic. If we put Z Prime Plus, uh, on the inside of this crown, it would actually not work because the Ceramer cement needs to be in contact with the zirconia oxide. In fact, the Ceramer cement really doesn't even care about uh, the contamination. So I could have put these crowns in without going through that IvoClean step. But once you learn that you know, you've got salivary phosphates there, um, even though Ceramer doesn't bond through that same mechanism, I just like knowing that the inside of the crowns are quote unquote clean, even though that's not really how we mean contaminated. So we're gonna go ahead and place all those in it through the magic of morphing software. You can see that we go from the tetracycline befores to the Bruxer afters. And um, is that the most aesthetic set of crowns you've ever seen? Not likely. Um, but when you look at that, look at what a huge improvement that is for him. And uh, it's going to be a little bit before we get to his lower anteriors because we have a few other patients who are dying to get in and kind of have this treatment done too. And as we start to play and experiment with our more translucent uh, Bruxer material, uh, we want to make sure that we're still able to hide some of these dark stains. So you can see his smile on the left and the relaxed nature of the smile on his right. His face just, face just kind of lights up a little more. The smile looks more natural. His eyes look a little bit different. It reminds me of that woman Dr. Malkmucker showed who, you know, once she actually had the Botox and stopped clenching so hard and her masters went down, it changed the way she looked. And for this technician that works here, the Bruxer Crowns changed the way he looked as well.